In this three-part video, the basics of FLAC and how the equations of motion are solved will be covered. In addition, the scripting language available in FLAC, called FISH, will be introduced. The goal of these videos is to provide the basics of FLAC so that users of the program will better understand the numerical details of the program. In this video, part two, the specific details on the numerical procedures used in FLAC will be presented. In part three, the scripting language FISH will be discussed. To begin, what does FLAC stand for? FLAC stands for Fast Lagrangian Analysis Continua. Two key words here may benefit from further discussion, Lagrangian and Continua. Lagrangian defines how we characterize the motion. In a Lagrangian description, we focus on the motion with respect to the material coordinates and time. This is highlighted by the figure to the right, where the movement of the body is a focus from time t1 to time t2. The term continua states that we are representing the soil and other geological materials as a continuous body, not as the actual soil grains and rock units. Other procedures such as the discrete element method may be used for this type of analysis. Atasca provides several software solutions for this and similar purposes. The graphical interface or GIIC in FLAC is shown here. Key items are highlighted. Many step-by-step -step tutorials of using the GIIC can be found at the Atasca Consulting Group's YouTube channel. Please go to Channels to subscribe. FLAC is a numerical analysis software with the goal to solve numerically the response of a given body. As an example, consider the slope shown in which the response will be determined numerically. To accomplish this, this continuum body is first replaced by a number of elements, or in FLAC called zones. Focusing on a single zone, the nodes define the key points. At each node, the equilibrium equation F equals MA is solved. The resulting displacements are calculated at these nodes, whereas the stresses and strains are calculated at the zones. In FLAC, the domain, such as the slope here, is composed of quadrilateral zones and sometimes triangular zones as well. Two example zones are highlighted here, a nearly square zone and a triangular zone. It is important to note that the triangular zone is in fact a quadrilateral zone with a node between two nodes located along the triangle's vertices. This fourth node is poorly constrained. Identifying nodes and zone in FLAC is different than in the finite element method. This is highlighted here for the domain composed of six quadrilateral elements. In the finite element method, the elements are identified by the numbers such as 46, 10, 43, 22, 82, and 12. The node numbers are also shown. For a particular element, for example, element 82, the associated nodes are 83, 19, 3, and 73. In FLAC, nodes and zones are identified with two integers representative of the row and column in the grid. The variable i is used to refer to the row number, whereas j is used to refer to the column number. In FLAC, the zones are identified as 1, 1, 2, 1. 3 comma 1, 1 comma 2, 2 comma 2, and 3 comma 2. The no numbering also follows the row and column format. For a particular zone, for example, 2 comma 2, the associated nodes are 2 comma 2, 3 comma 2, 3 comma 3, and 2 comma 3. The domain in FLAC can be viewed in the physical domain and the parent domain. As an example, consider the embankment shown. The grid in the physical domain is the embankment and is composed of rectangular and non-rectangular zones. The parent domain representation is shown to the right and is composed of one unit width square zones. Note that in the parent domain, the grade zones have been nulled so as to allow the slope faces on the embankment to be modeled in the physical domain. Note that for the null zones, all internal calculations in FLAC are omitted. An example mapping between the physical and parent domain is provided here for zone 18-1 and zone 16-11. One of the many important mechanical calculations is strain. FLAC uses the finite volume method to compute strain, the equation for which is provided here for the average normal strain in the zone in the x direction. As shown, the average strain is a function of the nodal displacements and the normal vectors and lengths of the zone sides. Note that such a strain computation can occur for any shape of zone. In contrast, the finite different methods computation of strain is provided here. 
this computation is restricted to only rectangular zones. Note that a common misunderstanding of FLAC is that FLAC is a purely finite difference program. This is not exactly correct. FLAC uses the finite volume method to compute strain and the finite difference method to march the calculations through time. Another very important computational detail in FLAC is that the quadrilateral zones in FLAC are actually internally composed of two sets of overlapping constant strain triangles, AB and CD, that are, when combined, the quadrilateral shown. With this approach of overlapping sets of triangles, FLAC continuously checks the relative shapes of the triangles and will stop if the ratio of either triangle from the overlaid quadrilaterals is less than the limiting value. The default value is 0.2. This condition is called bad geometry. A topic of critical importance in FLAC is the calculation cycle. The calculation cycle is shown here and is composed of four steps. These four steps of calculation occur at every step of the analysis. Beginning at the box at the middle left is shown the calculation of strain rate from velocities. Here, the finite volume method is used. Next is the constitutive law, which is used to calculate stresses from the strain rates. This is the next step of the calculation cycle, where the various constitutive models are used. For example, the Morkula model and the pm 4 sand model. Next, using the updated internal stresses and external forces, the resulting nodal forces are calculated. With these resulting nodal forces calculated, new nodal velocities are calculated using the finite difference method approximation of F equals MA. This calculation cycle occurs until the analysis is complete. This calculation cycle in FLAC will be shown next in pictorial form for a domain composed of four zones. In this example, the calculation cycle will start after the constitutive law calculation step. The domain in this example is loaded with four nodal forces in red and with internal stresses shown in green. Note that the stresses are represented by the rotated green crosses, represented of the direction and magnitude of principal stresses, with compressive normal stresses being positive. Let us now begin the computations. First, nodal forces are computed. To accomplish this, nodal forces are first computed for each element. Forces equivalent to the internal stresses in green are applied to the nodes. Also, body forces in light blue are also applied. Next, the elements are brought together and at each node, the force contributions are summed. This is highlighted by the vector sums here. The resultant force is shown in black. Non-zero resultant forces will cause the nodes to move. The calculation for which is calculated with F equals MA using the finite difference approximation. Now that velocities have been updated, the strain rates are computed using the finite volume method. The direction and magnitude of the principal strains are shown here. This completes this next step. Finally, using the constitutive law, the internal stresses at each element are recomputed. We have now completed a single cycle. In FLAC, it is important to note that this time marching scheme is used for all analysis problems, even for static problems. For static problems in FLAC, a relaxation scheme is used to absorb kinetic energy. As an example of this calculation process in FLAC, consider the simple problem of computing the displacement U0 of a column loaded with force F0. In FLAC, the displacement U0 is not determined by simply inverting the stiffness matrix, but instead is found iteratively as shown. In using this relaxation scheme in FLAC, two important considerations are worth noting damping, and time step. In terms of static problems, FLAC uses local damping, where the damping force FD at the grid point is proportional to the magnitude of the unbalanced force, but in the opposite direction. For example, consider a node with a mass M and an unbalanced force F. Due to this unbalanced force, the mass will move with a specific velocity, U dot. To reach static equilibrium, the damping force, Fd, will then be applied to this node, but in the opposite direction. Another important consideration is the value of the time step so the solution is accurate. In thinking about this, it is important to know that physical information is passed at a specific speed. For example, consider the column of material with a velocity pulse at the bottom. This pulse will propagate upward through the material at the P-wave velocity, Vp. 
Said another way, for a compressional wave, physical information is passed at VP. For an accurate solution for a mesh, such as shown here, the velocity for which the numerical information is passed must be faster than the speed of physical information. Thus, the time step dt must be less than the element size divided by the p-wave velocity. In FLAC, this value is further reduced to 0.8 times the element height divided by the p-wave velocity. Two other general items to mention are the initial conditions and boundary conditions. For static problems, initial conditions are helpful. Why? Because in a time marching scheme, a calculation from one step is dependent on that from the previous step. Mathematically, this is shown by recalling the finite difference approximation for f equals ma. Thus, the initial condition or initial values can affect the accuracy of the solution. Boundary conditions are also required and are of two general types, force or stress and velocity. Note that a single node cannot have conflicting boundary conditions, for example, force and velocity in the same direction. A rigid node is set by initializing and then fixing the velocity to zero. This presentation focused primarily on static-based mechanical problems. It should be noted that FLAT can also be configured to calculate fluid flow and thermal effects and couple these effects with mechanical response. For example, the coupling fluid flow mechanical calculations can be employed to analyze such problems as consolidation and soil liquefaction. Finally, FLAC can also be configured for actual dynamic calculations with a different damping and time step scheme for use in such applications as geotechnical earthquake engineering analyses. This completes part two of this three-part video. In the final video, part three, the scripting language in FLAC called FISH will be introduced.